What's up, everyone? Welcome to the first episode of the ISO. I'm Mishgal Bashai, and I'm here with two buddies, Jared. And, you know, we're just talking about sport, football, NFL, NBA during the quarantine season. So introduce themselves. Hayden, you want first? Yeah, uh, my name is Hayden. Uh, I know Golub and Jared from high school. I've known Jared for a really long time since elementary school. But uh, right now, I'm... I am a courtesy clerk at Ralph's and a central worker, um, doing the serving the community that I love, Palos Verdes, uh, and uh, I'm go- currently going to going to school at uh, El Camino. What's up, sports fans? This is your boy Jared. Uh, I'm go to college just like my fellow podcasters here. I'm a Detroit and Michigan sports fan. Everything Michigan football, everything University of Michigan, I should say, and um Detroit professional sports all right let's get into this all right and for our first episode we're going to be talking about the NFL draft that just happened 2020 NFL draft the first virtual draft I guess unless you have the WNBA draft but you know the first virtual draft that, that got big numbers no offense to WNBA but uh <laughs> what, what were your guys' uh first thoughts to that like do you think it went as smooth as you thought or you thought it could have been better yeah well so for the first virtual draft, first remote draft, I thought it actually went very smoothly. Um, we all know there was that hiccup they had that technological malfunction or whatever it was during the um, during the mock draft the day before. But uh, luckily everything went well. All the problems got smoothed over. It seems like everyone was just like having a good time. It seemed more um, laid back than the other ones. It was like pretty casual format for all the for all the participants like we got to see in their homes I know Cliff had a pretty sweet pad that was uh going around on Twitter um but yeah I I enjoyed it I liked I honestly liked the format where you get to see like inside the homes of the GMs and the and the coaches and the players and you get to see their families and basically what they're doing during the draft because all that stuff is usually behind closed doors or behind not behind closed doors but we don't really get to see that on draft day so I thought that was pretty interesting and I'm glad they did that yeah I was just gonna say that I really liked uh having uh the cameras in each uh pick's home where you can see like the genuine reactions from like the whole family in the living room rather than you know having um all the families out and like on a draft floor where you know they're or they're behind the stage waiting for the name to get called I think it just adds a little more pressure to the kids but um but I think it's really cool I thought it was really cool uh, it really went really smooth. Um, ESPN and the NFL Network did a really good job of giving us a lot of um, material to like hear about while um, in between picks. Sure, there was like a little lag, but nobody ever was. I never really saw anything too bad. Or yeah. Do you really think the say. NFL should take any lessons from this virtual draft to be implemented later on um, when COVID isn't? problem do you think there's you know they can learn anything about this format so yeah that's what I was I was gonna add I was thinking like this was probably in my opinion I don't know if I'm alone thinking this but this is probably the best draft like my favorite draft I agree like maybe maybe that's because there's like nothing going on right now during COVID um but I don't know I enjoyed this draft more for sure too go ahead yeah I was gonna say like and there's like lessons that we can learn from like innovation and like that's what we had to do during this COVID thing but it's like how do we innovate the virtual draft into the real draft now when this was just like an emergency thing that ended up being one of the better things for football we've seen in a really long time. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think they should definitely look into maybe not, you know, like remote pick selections, but at least having a camera on those who are being picked or those who are making the picks like the GMs and the coaches or there's something like that. Just letting the viewers in more on the actual behind the scenes draft process. Yeah, I mean, sometimes they have those, like, at the GM's office camp, but I feel like it, it wasn't even close to what they offered in this virtual draft when yeah. everyone's kind of at home. It didn't feel like there's any, like, fishy stuff going behind the scenes. Like, you could really tell what everyone was kind of doing, who was calling who, and stuff like that. I agree. Also, also great seeing just how these people are living. Like like I said, like I mentioned, um, Cliff Kling- Kingsbury with that crazy pad he has. Yeah, and, uh, I, I like that part of it, too, like, just getting yeah. to know these guys a little more. And even when it's, like, the player you draft, like, you see their family and you kind of get, like, 
where is from, like what his family's like, what you know. I yeah, that was I saw cool. I saw Javon Kimlaw's dad, and he was. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what he was on, but he was definitely very excited for his son when he got picked. <laughs> I'll say that. And uh, have you seen uh, DeAndre Swift's dad? That man is huge. I don't know. I yeah, don't know yeah. Before, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really interesting to seeing their lives, you know, in their actual homes. So, right. I mean, of course, after we have an NFL draft, you got to pick between your winners and losers. You guys got any choices for those? My winners would probably would be uh, Redskins. Redskins had a nice draft. Um, Broncos. Broncos had a really nice draft. Chargers. I, Chargers had a good first, first and second round. I didn't really understand the rest of the picks, but their first their first two picks were solid picks, really good picks. Yeah, those were the two teams that I really thought of most. Why do you think so? Uh, because I really thought they addressed a lot of the needs that um, uh, should have addressed. Um, you know, the Redskins are obviously a rebuilding franchise. And uh, when you're rebuilding, you want to build that defense first. So Chase Young was obviously the best uh, defensive player in the draft, uh, hands down, um, for several months now. You know, everybody's known he's going to be a, a top two pick. It's just whether he's going to be one or two. So, yeah, when you uh, address needs like that, and obviously the Chargers, you know, drafting their QB of the future and um, the linebacker they took, Kenneth Murray from Oklahoma. He's a side sideline to sideline player and um, in a division with a lot of fast skill players like the Kansas City Chiefs and now um, the Raiders and Broncos adding top wide receivers in the draft, Hen uh, Ruggs and Jerry Judy. So we have to counteract those players with uh, – players you take in the draft so I thought they did a good job for me I thought I thought well first of all I thought the Buccaneers did a really good job addressing their needs they went out and got Tristan Wirfs at tackle with the 13th or 14th pick and he was he was a top two um on most boards um tackle so I think that was a very good pick for them protecting the old man behind center they also rounded up that draft with solid picks I think um through the mid draft and later on they added Khalil Davis and Tyler Johnson. Also, I also liked the uh, the Ravens draft because they got they got J.K. Dobbins, who's obviously a dynamic uh, playmaker at running back, and they got um, Justin Matabuke, D tackle, and Devin Duvernay, a wide receiver. I think they're both very elite players that they got at good value picks, along with their, even their last pick, Geno Stone. I think he has a lot of potential in this league if they can develop him as a player. Yeah, so I would say aside from that, the Cowboys also had a good draft. They got they addressed wide receiver and um, their defense. So I would say, yeah, those are the ones that stuck out to me. Yeah, also also I wanted to add in that the Redskins traded their disgruntled left tackle, Trent Williams, who was owed a lot of money and wasn't playing. So finally deciding to let go of him after being dumb and trying to reconcile a torn relationship. Um, yeah, so he, that was he said no to the Vikings trade offer. I was pissed about yeah, that. Yeah, but he's now he's in San Francisco, so I don't think he's complaining. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be either. Uh, I was going to say for my winners, with this, with the draft, you really don't know who the winners are going to be going in. And also, like, I didn't know that many people. I'm going to be real with you this year. Uh, I just knew the big names. So I got to say Bengals, they're winners. They got Joe Burrow. They got who they needed. That, that that makes them a winner for me, as well as T. Higgins. Like, those two, I already know. Like, those two are going to carry a franchise for a while. As well as they already got A.J. Green. I feel like he's becoming more and more inclined to stay as the Bengals keep putting together pieces. And if they get rid of Dalton for someone, they're going to get space to sign someone else as well, maybe fix their defense. On a lot of – I mean, I follow the Vikings, so everywhere on Twitter, I'm seeing the Vikings are, are having, like, the best draft class. I don't really know what we did that was so great. We just traded all our picks down, and we got, like, 15 fifth through seventh round picks. I guess if that gets you the best grade, I'll take it. But, but I mean, I, I didn't mind our first two picks, Justin Jefferson. And Justin Jeff Jefferson Biden. is a good pick. Yeah, I, I would have – I don't know. I'm a homer, so I would have – preferred Michael Pittman, but I am I have no complaints with Justin Jefferson either. So now, um, the winners, you got your losers. What teams would you guys name as your losers? Uh, I think that's pretty easy for me as a Vikings fan. I think the Bears and the Pack, they both didn't perform to their best, I don't think, in the draft with the Packers not giving Aaron Rodgers any help, drafting Jordan Love in the first round. And they just re-signed 
or not re-signed, but they just extended Aaron Rodgers, which made no sense to me if they're trying to move on from him and extend him at the same time. And then as well as not just drafting any wide receivers late. And with the Bears, I mean, they drafted uh, Cole Kmet with their pick, and they have 10 tight ends on their roster now. Like, I don't understand where they're going with their roster. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um on the Bears one coming from NFC North. Yeah, they definitely didn't do all they could have. I also think the Raiders underachieved in this one. I think they just, they reached on a lot of their picks. In the in the first round, they got Henry Ruggs. I'm not going to say that's a reach, but he was the first wide receiver off the board. And they were projected, or not projected, but they're better prospects according to most analysts. Also, they got cornerback Damon Arnett in the second round. Also, it was a a bit of a re- not second round actually with their second pick in the first round also was a reach a lot of mock drafters had him going in the second round so yeah just like that I think across the board they just reached on a lot of their picks and they didn't really address what they need they got they got a lot of wide receivers so Derek Carr will have his toys but other than that I just don't really think they address what they needed would, would you have gone for a quarterback if you were them or you think this for- draft class was in the year for it Something, yeah. I would have gone for a quarterback with the first pick if I were them. Either that or I, – I mean, I don't mind their first pick. Henry Ruggs is the first pick. I don't mind that. But I think after the first pick, yeah, they, they shouldn't draft a quarterback. There's no need really because you're not going to find a franchise quarterback really um, later unless you really believe in that guy, of course. But I just think it was throughout the draft, I think they just had a lot of reaches and they didn't really address, you know, their areas of – their most important needs. Fair, fair enough. Yeah. What about you, Hayden? All right. So for me, um, my loser of the draft was the New England Patriots because I don't really understand. I don't really get any of the things that the Patriots did. I mean, they had a ton of defensive players leave. A lot of O line guys left or are just old and getting older. Like they drafted with their first pick in the draft. They drafted some guy from from the SAC who had like I don't even understand the pick. It made no sense to me. I don't I don't get it. Because they already have Gilmore in the back. It was he was a safety there. He had Gilmore. They have the McCourty brothers, and they got Pat, and they got Patrick Trung. You know, I just don't get it. I don't really understand any of the picks that they made. And they drafted a racist kicker. Oh, I I didn't really see the tattoo story. No, it's all good. I mean, I, I don't know the guy personally, but uh, you know, it seems shady. Yeah, I mean, I knew they were going to trade their first round pick because that's just what Belichick does. It didn't even seem like he wanted to be there with the dog yeah. thing, like. <laughs> He just was as he had to. And they got a few tight ends, which I don't even know if they have any on their roster right now. I know they just lost one, but so I guess they get some more of those. Uh, they got some linebackers and that and some offensive linemen. Yeah, it was just a very I don't think they got any wide receivers. Out. I don't think that they didn't draft any wide receivers or nothing. See no, like just all the line, picks all the picks that they took are from like tiny schools like or like like not not very good you know like lower tier teams yeah it, it, yeah one safety that was like the only out of position player they got really other than linebackers and o-linemen seemed yeah. like a pretty just average draft to me and yeah uh, belichick said that he wasn't going to draft a quarterback and that was part of the plan so uh, i guess they're sticking with stidham until they can get dalton which I hope they yeah, do. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Maybe they might sign Tank for Trevor. Or tank, tank for Trevor. Trevor. But or Justin Fields. You really think Kraft is going to gonna let Belichick do that this year? Bro. No, they would. Kraft they probably would. knows. Kraft knows. Kraft knows that they don't have a, a roster. I mean, come on. He knows Tom no, Brady just left. He realizes what the time is. Well, what time is ahead in New England? They still, have, they still have Bill Belichick, though. Yeah, they so, still have yeah, Bill Belichick. Exactly. Exactly. No matter what, they're, they're not going to – This not is the getting... owner who's never experienced losing in the past 20 years. Like, he, he's going to have, like, a reality check this year for sure. He's going to have a reality check, but he's Somebody's, not, he's not going to be – He can't just win forever. He's not going to be in the mix for Trevor Lawrence, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I, unless I they, unless, that. unless the Patriots actively tank. Bro, I don't know. It looks like they're – it sounds like tanking to me right now. I feel like Kraft and Belichick already know, already knew that like after Brady leaves, it's going to be a rebuilding period for a few short years. I don't even think they'll be rebuilding for that long. Well, the thing is, they didn't even, they wouldn't even have to rebuild if they didn't have to trade Jimmy G. Like this was Belichick. Yeah, but yeah, but Tom just like left. Tom just coming. left. Jimmy G would have been sitting behind Tom forever. He would. He this would have been. This would have been his first time. Not yeah. not coming out of the shadows. Yeah. I, yeah, no, I think because of how much of. I think he would have played him like in the playoffs when 
Tom Brady was starting to suck if he was still on the roster this year. Yeah, Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick's playing to win. He, he's he's not worried about friends. Do you, you think Belichick would bench Brady midway through a playoff game if they're if they're they're down by like a score or something? If Brady's not playing, hey, well. hey, hey, Saban did the same shit. Okay, with okay, 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 okay. So let's say Brady. Let's say Brady's like fourteen for thirty right now, and you, and they're down to touchdown. You're taking Brady out for, no, for Garoppolo. No. No, okay. no, no, not down seven. Thank you. But yeah, down seven in a playoff game? No. Well, you just said you just said it. You could see you just said you could see Belichick taking Brady out in a playoff. Yeah, game. Yeah, not down seven in a playoff game. <laughs> yeah, but you said, well. you said if he wasn't playing well. You said if he wasn't playing well, and I just gave you a scenario where he wasn't playing well. Dude, if he's not playing well and they're still down seven, like it's still Tom Brady. Yeah. Like, he's gonna. You have a better chance with him clutching it than some random named. Jimmy Garoppolo. So now Jimmy G's a random? Well, he he's a random had he not gone to San Francisco. In this scenario, he is a random, yes. I don't know. A random that that, Jimmy well, G was not a random, random that, that in, in Belichick New England. Was obsessed with. Yeah, Belichick, Belichick loved, uh, liked uh, Garoppolo. Yeah, and he, it turns out he was right. Anyway, yes. enough, enough, enough Jimmy G talk. Let's get back to the draft. All right. Did you have any picks that you really like, non-first-round picks, that some sleepers that you thought are going to be really yes. good NFL players? Yes. Give me yes. some. Give me. Okay. So the Chargers took uh, in the, the the last in the seventh round they took KJ Hill, the wide receiver from uh, Ohio State. Good pick. And he's uh, his only knock. He doesn't have four four speed, but he, he makes up for it in like his other um, attributes. He's a, he's a good route runner. He's um, good in tight spaces. He's good on the catch. He's good after the catch. He's good in the slot. He's he's a good slot receiver. He's like a little short guy. Ohio State ran him in the slot a lot, but they had him outside too. So he's versatile. He's a good pick. I like him a lot. A lot of a lot of people were talking about him. Some some picks I noticed. Not that it's an amazing player necessarily. I just think it was a very good value sleeper pick. Curtis Weaver was picked late in the either in the sixth or seventh round. The uh, the edge out of Boise State. I know he's a beast, and I was I was actually shocked that he slid that late. Same goes for Bradley and I, who similarly just slid down the charts. I don't know why. Uh, it didn't make much sense to me. So whoever got them, I, it it slips me right now. But whoever picked up those guys, I think those they are beasts. Looking to the Lions in the fifth round, the, they drafted uh, Jason Huntley, a running back out, out of New Mexico State. Very polarizing pick with this one because it's the second running back we drafted in this draft, and the first one was in the second round. So just a lot. I know a lot of people didn't like it because running back wasn't a need, obviously, because we had just gotten one. But this guy is. I'm. I watched tape on him after, and I'm excited to see this guy play. Whether it's just special teams or he gets working on like third downs, um, just switching in in the backfield. This guy runs a four three. He's small he's quick as hell and so hard to tackle his highlights at new mexico state are ridiculous and i'm excited to see him play so yeah one of the fastest guys in the draft yeah from for my sleepers uh, i was trying to pick one that wasn't a wide receiver because literally every sleeper i'm seeing is a wide receiver but this was the most talented wide receiver class we'd seen in a while i guess one of my other picks was uh Antoine Winfield Jr. going to the Buck in the second round. I thought he had first round talent and he ends up going mid first to the Buccaneers. So I think Brady's going to be really happy with that. His dad was a pro for the Vikings and now he's going to carry his legacy. I think his dad intercepted Tom Brady and now his son gets to play with him. So that's mm-hmm. kind of cool. And then uh, AJ Vanessa, the defensive end out of Iowa. I know the game against USC, the Holiday Bowl or whatever he's sacked keyed on like six times so I just remember that name after that so he's a, he's a legit player too he, he went 54 to the Bills yeah he slid because a lot of he had, people he had a terrible combine yeah oh, a lot did. of people were yeah. questioning his his physical exactly. uh, attributes he hey, certainly, they, said, they said his whole family is full of athletes so you know I, I ain't gonna deny any of that he certainly he certainly produced at Iowa and It'll be interesting to see how he translates to the NFL, given that he didn't do very well in the combine. He's in Buffalo, so it's cold up there. He'll he'll have to eat his way up to over there. He's not. Yeah, he is a little there. undersized. And then I guess we can grade our, our teams each. So, Hayden, what do you, what do you give the Chargers grade overall for their draft? I give them a B plus because um, B plus. Yeah. I'd like to hear you defend it. Okay, I give him a B plus because of the picks of Justin Herbert and Kenneth Murray. And KJ Hill is also a steal, so that factors in as well. 
Justin Herbert is obviously, is obviously going, one of the more talented quarterbacks in this draft. I, I don't think he could have landed in a better spot. You know, he's going to he's coming into a team that's got a lot of weapons. He's going to sit behind Tyrod for a little while. So he's going to mature and learn the playbook and learn the ins and outs of football before he goes out there and starts dropping dimes. Kenneth Murray is going to be a beast. Him and Derwin, that defense is going to be no joke. That defense is going to be no joke this year. He adds um, speed, speed at the linebacker position, which is something that we haven't had uh, in a while. Consistency at the linebacker position, which is something we also haven't had in a while. He gives us a lot of um, versatility at the position. So anytime you can get depth or get more versatile at any position, that uh, that always helps. And KJ Hill was the wide receiver that we've been uh, missing uh, for a while for a while now. Um, Keenan Allen and Mike Williams have been doing a lot of uh, carrying for the wide receiver group the past few years as Travis Benjamin has fallen off. But I think KJ Hill can become a legit third option in, uh, for the Chargers this year. That's why I give him a B plus because of the immediate impact the players will have. Well, I give the Chargers a C, and that's because they did nothing to address the abomination that they have out there at offensive tackle. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Really? Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna send a rookie quarterback out there to just get trounced upon. <laughs> the okay. Division. With no <clears throat> lineman. We actually, 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 Jerry, 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 it's really funny that you, you bring drafted, that up because you had, you drafted the Chargers drafted all skill players and one linebacker. <laughs> that's like it. Okay, that's funny the because we traded. Kenneth Murray is good. I'll give you that. I like I got? like Kenneth Murray. He's he's a, he's a physical good player. But Justin Herbert, your first pick, is definitely a very boomer bust player and. Behind that offensive line, which is atrocious, I'm. It's not. I'm, it's not. I'm, I'm worried for him. Dude, do you uh, even know who we have on the O line now? We've got Brian Belaga, uh, who's uh, uh, I can't even tell you how many times he's been All Pro or Pro Bowler, and we've got Trey like Turner, who's, Trey Turner, who's 26, and he's a five-time Pro Bowler, five-time All Pro. Uh, you named one person. That's not. I okay, can't name two. Line. I named two, and we've and, and we got Marquise Pouncey at the center position, bro. We can be fun. Okay, I hear you. Line. I hear you. I just want to. I just want to see your offensive line when he goes out there. I want to see your tackles. Okay. All right. All right. All right. It's okay. Six, six picks, <laughs> all right. not a single old lineman. You guys should. I think you guys should have drafted a. Wait, who's your running back? You guys, you guys should have drafted a running back Eckler, earlier. Sure. Eckler, we did. Eckler and Josh Kelly. We drafted the guy from UCLA. You got Josh Kelly. Kelly but you should have drafted one in the second round. Bro, Josh Kelly's great. What are you talking about? Great. Dude, I, come on. Go on, please. Don't do that. Great. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, Bro, you yeah, know yeah. Josh Kelly can I mean, pop well, up at he, any he, time. He, he, Dude, Josh Kelly's great. so good in the end zone, too. He, he, come on, man. He's a big physical back. He, he's, and he can run he, fast. He, he, he's, come he's on, one of the best players. He's one of the best players on a team that went four and eight two straight seasons. That's what exactly. I can do. Exactly. <laughs> hey, a ringing endorsement there. Uh, and, oh, and a, exactly. And one of the weakest Pac-12 conferences ever. Yeah. Actually, Pac-12 is pretty bad. Bro, you, you guys are gonna learn. That's why Josh Kelly was a third round pick. Fourth. Yeah, you guys you guys should have addressed that sooner. You guys yeah, should have addressed Sorry, tackle. Whatever. Anyway, what? moving on from the okay. atrocity that is the just... atrocity that the Detroit Lions are. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'll got, give the Lions a grade. Like How about F? Minutes. Yeah, moving towards the stellar franchise, this historic franchise in the Detroit Lions, one of the oh, best okay. franchises ever in the NFL. Uh crickets. Yeah. Crickets. I give <laughs> I give their draft a a soft B plus, and it was originally going to be B, but then I heard Hayden say for the Chargers, and there's no way the Lions had a worse draft than the Chargers. That's just ridiculous. So I'm going to at least give it a B plus on this one. We went out there and we our needs. We got cornerback Jeffrey Okuda, number one consensus cornerback in the draft. We snagged him up with our first pick. We went in this draft. It seems with a clear goal to basically transform our offense which which is interesting because our defense was the problem last year but well actually we had a lot of problems let's be fair it is the Detroit Lions um but yeah we went into this draft with a clear goal to address our running game so we went and got two running backs one of them was in the second round and we got two guards the um, the three and four guards on Mel Kuyper's um, board so I would be very excited about that. Our inside run game should definitely be established now. Uh, Jonah Jackson and Logan Stenberg, the guards that we drafted, are going to be able to compete immediately for starting jobs. And they're bullies on the line, I tell you. <laughs> so watch out for them. Uh, watch out for the Detroit Lions running game. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. We also went and got Quintez Cephas, a uh, very big, dominant, uh, athletic wide receiver out of Wisconsin. 
he he only fell as late as he did to us in the fifth round because he had the slowest uh, 40 time uh, in the wide receiver class. But other than that, this guy has all the tools to be a pro receiver. He's he's pro ready. Um, other than other than his 40 time, which if you watch him on tape, he's he's blowing past cornerbacks. So I don't think that's much of a problem. So yeah, really excited about that. I'm excited that we addressed our run game and. Hey, sorry, we got cut off there. Um, but yeah, just closing this off. The only reason I'm giving the Lions a soft B plus and not higher is because didn't really address the pass rush as much as much as I would have liked to. It was definitely our number one um, issue going into this draft. That in the cornerback position because we were probably dead last in the league at getting to the quarterback ladder. So I would have liked to see have seen more picks addressing our defensive line we did get julian okwara in the third round which i thought was a good value pick but other than that we didn't address the defensive line until the last six so that is my one that is my one problem with this draft but hopefully they will address the defensive line more in free agency and with undrafted free agents but yeah we'll see if they have a plan for that otherwise i thought it was a great draft and i'm excited to see the new pieces we got yeah, I I agree with you pretty much. I think the Lions had a solid draft, which I usually can't say for most drafts. So <laughs> to be very true. Bob, yeah, they Bob actually Quinn did not. The they did worst draft. Some... The Lions are one of the worst drafting teams ever. So if we don't mess it up, then I'm happy. Yeah, they they addressed their concerns with offensive line early in the second, third round. They got their running back and they got their cornerback that they needed to replace Darius Slay. Their running game has always been a problem. So now they got DeAndre Swift, who I think is going to be pretty good. He's going to be at least a running back that you can rely on on a uh, weekly basis. And then on top of that, they just got more O linemen late in the round and some linebackers and safeties. Like they just had an overall top to bottom, just had a good draft, I thought. Yeah. I hate to admit it, but they did have an all right draft. I guess they, they did all right. The guard picks are smart. I wish the Chargers actually did take a. Take a take a lineman instead of um, the safety they took in like the sixth or fifth round. I, I don't know. Didn't really make much sense to take another safety for us. Whatever. But yeah, you know the Lions did have a solid draft. Now that I look at the draft picks, so <laughs> I'll give them a, I'll give them a B because I know they didn't do better than. The but Chargers. we're Chargers. <laughs> Chargers made a splash. That's why. <laughs> Just because of KJ Hill. <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you, it's because it, of Justin it, Herbert. It's because of Justin it, Herbert. Y'all messed up and let Justin Herbert fall to the Chargers. All right, fair enough. Fair, I, I'll come back. If Justin Herbert is a beast, I will admit they are. They get a B-plus. Come back and say, plus grade on this draft if Justin Herbert pans out. All right, and then uh, moving on to our last team, my Vikings. I'll, I'll give us an A-minus, not for our picks. Honestly, I, I don't really know most of these picks, but just for all the draft capital we got, like, like we had the most picks in the draft. I think we had like 15, 16, or 17. And we just kept trading back every single pick. And we were getting picks for next year, the year after. We traded like a fifth round pick this year for a fourth round pick next year. So I can't complain about that. And then we, we had two first rounders already, which I both really liked. And then with our second round pick, we got that O lineman we needed. And then once I, I think we were stockpiling a bunch of those picks to get that tackle from uh, the Redskins. But after he said no to our offer, I think we just said screw it, and we just started trading back and using some of these picks. And it's just a bunch of O linemen and some defensive players, some cornerbacks. Uh, so I'm all for development. Just if one of these players ends up being a gem out of all these seventh and sixth rounders, I can't complain. Other than the Nate Stanley pick, uh, he's going to be our third string quarterback, I guess, now out of Iowa. I like Jake Browning better. He's our third stringer, but it is what it is. If my biggest complaint is a fourth round quarterback, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I, I agree with your assessment there. Definitely training back all those picks. I think they accumulated like 16 picks this draft. It was ridiculous. Definitely great maneuvering by the GM and coaches involved. Yeah, when you when you pick like 16 times, you're bound to land at least a few times. So I definitely think they capitalized off this draft with all the capital they got. You could say I would give them I would give them an A too for sure, just based off of all the picks they had. Yeah, for me, like I don't know if it is for most people, but I'd rather have like six seventh round picks than one third round pick or second round pick. 
Yeah, because just having a lot of picks is yeah, it's just insanely like insanely valuable. One of these guys is yeah. gonna hit, or two of these guys. Just, yeah, just hit. having all those chances to hit on a player is what makes a difference a lot of times. And then, uh, yeah, we can talk about the biggest picks of the night. I think the biggest two, arguably from day one and two, were uh, the Packers, of course, taking Jordan Love. Jordan Love. Uh, what twenty third overall pick? I can't remember exactly. They traded up. From thirty or was it thirty? Yeah, twenty six. Yeah, twenty six pick. They, they got him with the twenty to the sixth pick, and they got yeah, they got him with the twenty six pick, and then the Eagles also traded up. Or no, they didn't trade up, but they kept their second round pick and they used it on Jalen Hurts, which also a head scratcher for many. I think. I can kind of make sense of that pick. I feel like, I feel like the um. The Hertz pick is just like insurance, just in case, you know, Wentz continues to have these injury problems. He can have well, a, a quarterback coming I, like that. I think with Wentz, like, he is injury prone. He had that one ACL, and then was he out for two seasons or one season? I think one. it was one. Yeah, so he was out for one season that time. So, I mean, it, shit happens. And then most of the other time he's been injured, it happens near the playoffs, like this past year when. He had that uh, concussion, and then uh, what's his name comes in? McCown. Like, do you think that oh, yeah. Jalen Hurts really makes that big a difference over McCown in that situation? Or no? Yeah, like that's that's what I was thinking when they drafted that pick. But I'm it, just it, I'm it, just saying, like, like if he has like another big injury or something, you know? Yeah, I mean, you, I, 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 I don't know if he's a player you develop around or not, but I guess Philadelphia was a good spot for him, like. Yes, I don't know. I, mean, I think I think the Jalen Hurts pick has upside. Like I think you can definitely mold him into something. He de- certainly has potential. But also maybe that pick is just to to get capital later um, in a trade or whatever. I don't know what their plans are for him, but I know that the Eagles are definitely fully behind Wentz at this point. Maybe maybe this draft pick shows that they are a little worried about his worried about his health history but i think yeah ultimately they're behind Wentz and hurts is yeah. a, is just an upside pick that can be turned into you know value down the line maybe with yeah, jordan love with jordan love i i think that's a smart pick i yeah i don't mind at all if they think jordan loves their guy like they did in 05 when they went and got aaron Rodgers while having brett Favre at quarterback like it's the same idea if they think jordan love is their guy you know go ahead and get him I know people don't like the fact that they traded up for him, but again, I think the quarterback is too important to, you know, to gamble on. So going and getting your guy is if he's going to be your franchise guy in five years, you know, then who cares if you traded up four spots to get him, you know, but yeah. Anyway, I, I, I know why it was such a very interesting pick, but I do like it. Although it is it is kind of interesting when you look at the fact that the Packers haven't drafted a single target, re- receiving target for Aaron Rodgers as long as he's been on the team in the first round. They have not gotten a single first round talent at receiver or tight end or whatever you have you. And again, in this draft, they failed to get protection for him and and the best receivers in the class. So I think they did kind of screw up Rodgers with this draft maybe a little bit. And I know if I were Aaron Rodgers, I would not be happy with it because it seems like they, they're kind of, you know, kind of pointing to a, a close to that Rodgers chapter in Green Bay. But looking towards the future, I think it could have definitely been a very solid draft for the Packers as long as this Jordan Love pick pans out for sure. Yeah, I was going to say I agree with you. Like, they're going to have to move on from Aaron Rodgers eventually. I think it's kind of similar to what <clears throat> what uh, Belichick did when they drafted Garoppolo back then. I'm assuming it was the same kind of transition they wanted. But, I mean, they didn't make that pick in the first round, and they definitely didn't trade up to make that pick. And on top of that, I mean, I still think this team wants to win this year with Aaron Rodgers. So that part I don't understand, not drafting a wide receiver later on. They drafted a running back in a tight end with their second and third overall picks. And then after that, it's just all O-linemen or defensive players. So from that point, yeah, of course, their draft didn't make any sense to me. I thought they could have waited until next year or the year I make this quarterback decision in the draft, honestly. Yeah, I, I agree. They certainly could have waited and they could have supplied Rodgers with more help right now to win right now. But again, also, if they think Jordan Love is their guy and if they 
have such high grades on this guy, you know, go ahead and get him, I think, personally. QB is too important of a position in this league. So uh, yeah, over, exactly. under, over under two more years for Aaron Rodgers and as a starter for Green Bay. Under. Over. 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 Under. I want to take the – I'm really tempted to take the under, but I really – I think he's going to be under, dude. I think he's going to cut. I think he's, he's, he's going to be bad. Aaron I think he, Yeah, dude, yes. Yes. Cut? Yes. Yes. In two years? Yes. Uh, unless they kick him out. He's 36. Dude, Tom Brady is He's like 36 42. in his okay, yeah, but okay, really? But is you're gonna okay, but is Aaron Rodgers playing like Tom Brady was at 36? No, nowhere in Aaron either. Rodgers is still in league. They won like 12 games. Tom Brady had a Super Bowl at 36. Aaron Rodgers just won like 13, 12, 13 Bowl. games. No, I mean he won Tom Brady won a Super Bowl at 36. What? Yeah, yeah. And Aaron Rodgers won 12 Aaron games. Aaron Rodgers just got replaced at 36. And he hasn't they got draft. replaced yet. Hey, relax on that one. Dude, they draft. Hey, they drafted his replacement. You don't, Tom, dude. You, you don't draft a quarterback in the first round without like he's he, Jordan Love needs to sit for a year and then he's gonna play. Yo, Jimmy G was drafted as Tom Brady's replacement. Tom Brady has not been replaced. I don't think. Well, was, uh, uh, wasn't a uh, Manzella backup for a really long time too before he came in. So like, I don't know. He was a first round. I'm just thinking like first round picks who sat for over a year, other than Aaron Rodgers. I know Mahomes sat that one year, but I mean that was Alex Smith's year. Yeah, that's that's all I can think of. There's definitely more. Jared Goff didn't he sit for half a year at least? Oh yeah, he, he sat for half the year and then uh, my case, and then he lost like seven of his last eight. If, if the Green Bay Packers start like four and six or four and eight, like something like that, I I wouldn't be surprised seeing Jordan Love start like the last four games and that Packers starting this progression of hey we're probably gonna really? trade. Rogers. You guys think they're moving off Rogers that quickly? Yeah, yeah, dude, he's not playing. Man. He's not. But his his numbers are declining, dude. He doesn't. Look they bad. won twelve like, games last season, man. and they had a really easy schedule last season. They finished last yeah. or second. They last did, season. and they lost they to the Chargers. It, they did, they did, but they won twelve. Can't games. explain that. They lost both games in Cali, and they lost to yeah San Francisco. Well, this year we all have to play the NFC South, and if he if he does poorly against the NFC South teams, then I, I it might be quits. If he goes one and three against them, that's that's a bad. Bro, they were they were not good. They were not good against elite teams last year. I I remember I saw a stat. If you flip their one score, if you flipped every team's one score games, like Green Bay would be in the top ten in the draft instead of. Dang. Yeah, could, they were so just one. The Lions like, would be like number one. Well, I don't know. I I remember. I Chargers think was, would have made the playoffs. It was either the Packers against the Lions or the Packers against the Bears. They won both games, and they only or and they won both games in the series, and they led for zero seconds. They were both just last second. It's probably the fucking the Lions, dude. The Lions, I swear, were always beating the fucking Packers and lose on like a hail mary or some bullshit. Yeah, I, I think they beat you twice while leading for zero seconds. So it's it's. I I really think they got lucky this past year. And I'm glad they understand it. It seems like they they kind of knew. No, yeah, it, it did seem like they knew they should have had that record. <laughs> yeah, they were kind of counted out in the beginning, despite having like one of the best records, and everyone just knew, like, yeah, they're not that good. Yeah, yeah. Every week it was just like, oh, they're not that good. They're not that good, and stayed that way. Even when they beat the Vikings on Monday night, Dalvin Cook didn't play that game, so that was our excuse. It's a fair excuse. All right. Well, that will do it for our first episode of the ISO Pod. Uh, if you guys want to follow us on Twitter, I'm Guy Shy. You can follow me. Hayden Green, Hayden Green 78. J Pat, maybe an underscore, may not. I don't know. Wasn't ready for this one. All right. Well, that'll do it for the first episode. Also, I wrote an article about the NFL draft. I'm going to link it in the description. And, you know, it would be great if you guys check that out. Uh, see you all in the next ISO pod. Peace. I can subscribe, y'all. Yeah.